Well, I'm uh, excited about this next segment. We've been thinking about this for a while, and uh, I was just... Wait, what the hell? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. Uh, one, that that is my ringtone, and, um, and, uh, and two, that somehow, it, what, did it get hooked to the mains via Bluetooth or something? Ugh. Um, okay, so anyway, uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna do this this segment and uh, whoa, um, they they left a voicemail. <laughs> Who leaves voicemails at the, in this day and age? We gotta check it, right? We should check it. Let's check it. I see you're smart enough not to pick up the phone when someone on a blocked line reaches out to you, Chris. But I hope you at least check your messages. I've been doing some thinking since the internet research agency let me go, and I figured you're probably still wondering, what happened to Lucy? Oh, Chris. When you tap the like icon on a social media post from Lucy2112 berating a national coffee chain's pumpkin spice latte campaign as a heavy-handed plot from the coastal elite, you couldn't have known she'd been waiting for someone like you her whole life. White, male, late 30s, and an occasional voter, originally from Oceanside, California. <laughs> when she reached out, you explained that you'd liked her post by mistake. You'd been aiming for a less controversial animated gif of a goose, but Lucy still mentioned her surprise at someone from Oceanside popping up in her mentions. She was born in Carlsbad, she told you. Isn't it funny how the internet brings us all together? You learned more about Lucy in the following weeks, Chris, and to be honest, as I invented her, so did I. My boss warned you that my boss warned that you weren't worth the time, but I was too engrossed in building out Lucy's life to care. I decided she and her husband John lived just north of Baltimore with their two cats, Sergey and Rachmaninoff. Our names guy was sick that day. She liked college football, crab legs, and Target. In back and forths while you waited to pick up Calvin from karate, you and Lucy discussed things like putting Old Bay on popcorn or the political ads flooding your respective feeds. It's hard to know what to believe anymore, Lucy said. You probably knew you shouldn't have been swapping stories with an internet stranger, Chris, but I guess Lucy seemed real to you and harmless enough. Despite your better judgment, your conversations with Lucy shifted over time. You told her that you loved your kid, but wondered if you had an identity beyond him anymore. She complained that there wasn't much to her life beyond late nights at the office on a project for an overseas client. Once, after a PTA mixer, you asked Lucy whether she ever felt alone in a crowded room. All the time, she said. One Saturday afternoon, you thanked her. For what? asked Lucy. For being a good listener, you said. I don't really know you, but it feels nice to have met a friend. It does, replied Lucy. This may sound weird, you said, but can I call you? I'd like to hear the voice behind the words on the screen. Out here in Moscow, it was 1 a.m. on Sunday, and I, having come this far, took a deep breath. Okay, Lucy told you, giving you a frantically purchased number with a 410 area code. The line rang, and I answered it. Hello, you said. Lucy? I stared at my monitor, headphones in, microphone on, silent. Are you there? You asked. I opened my mouth to say something, and my boss leaned over my shoulder to click end call. Lucy's been quiet since then, Chris. While knowing why may not bring you any particular joy, I hope you'll think back fondly on her. It's funny, but I miss her too. She's what's driving me to get on the phone with you this afternoon as I stroll through Red Square, puzzling out how I'm going to put all this on my resume when I apply for a job in tech. This woman we created together lives on in your memory now, a friend who still listens in her silence. Perhaps you might imagine her responses to those questions you ask yourself as you sit alone in your car, waiting for your child to hop in and head home. You might even hear her voice. Bodine Bowling reading voicemail from Moscow by Chaz Carey.